Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome to the Gut Health Happy Hour. So happy to have you here. We are talking about detoxification. So there's a lot of misconceptions about detoxification. So we're gonna go over everything that you need to know today about not doing an extreme detox, but supporting your body in its natural detox processes so that your body can work properly. When toxins come into the body, they can go out. That is our main goal. We're not talking about going on a big water fast or juice cleanse or anything like that. What we're doing is setting our body up for success every day so that it can handle anything that comes its way. That's really what I like to do with my clients in my program, The Happy Belly Method, is get their body so healthy and so happy and so set up for success that they can go out and have the food that they want to eat and they can do all the things that they want to do and their body is so healthy that it can handle it. That is really what I do with my clients in my program. So welcome everybody. And just a little disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. I don't diagnose, treat, or heal, but I do know from all of my research what I've done with my own health. I had gut issues for 30 plus years and now at almost 45 years old, I feel the best I've ever felt in my entire life and I've taken what I've learned and I do that with my clients. So what I've done all these years over going to school, trial and error, working with my clients, working with myself, I know what works for gut issues and one of the things that you need to improve your gut issues is to detox your body. It's one of my four pillars. So I have four pillars of health. And if you don't have all of these four pillars, if one or two of them is lacking, your health house is gonna crumble, right? So if you're building your health house, you need to have nutrition, all of your nutrition, only one in 10 people get enough nutrients from their food. Detoxification, we're living in a, the most toxic world in history. So we need to have some daily detoxification. We need to balance our gut bacteria. It's the most important thing in the body is our gut bacteria. We're actually more bacteria than we are human. So we've got to get that done. And then we've got to work on the gut brain connection. So those are the four pillars. So what we're talking about today is the second pillar, detoxification. So supporting the body in its natural detox processes because your body does have a wonderful detox system. We were born with this wonderful system, but in the world we live in today, it is overloaded. So we've got a toxic load bucket and we can handle a few things going into our bucket every day. But in the world we live in now, much different world than our grandparents lived in, right, in the 40s, we are bombarded with toxins every day. So we need to consciously, intentionally be supporting our natural detox processes a lot more than our grandparents had to back in the day. So that's what we're talking about today. So on our gut health happy hours, Speaking of that gut-brain connection, we wanna get our body into rest and digest. Let's get out of fight or flight, which we're in all day. Let's get into rest and digest. Rest and digest is where all the magic happens. The more you can get into rest and digest, the better your digestion will work. So we're just gonna take a nice big deep collective breath. So in through the nose, expand your rib cage, let your belly expand, and then just let everything out. So as much as you can throughout the day, try and get your body into rest and digest. So on these trainings, I don't just want you to write down two things of information and go on about your way. I actually want to improve your digestion every time you come on a training. So doing these deep breaths gets your body into a place where it can actually heal. So let's relax the neck, relax the shoulders. Keep doing those deep breaths as much as you can, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Try to keep the breath out of the neck and the chest. If you breathe into the neck and the chest, you're telling your body there's something to be stressed out about, and then your digestion shuts down. So first thing, that's what we're gonna do. Second thing, we're gonna say what we are grateful for because that is the second best way to get your body into rest and digest. And it really trains the brain to look for the positive, which just gets your body working better. So we're gonna all say one thing that we are grateful for. I am grateful for, gosh, so many things, but many celebrations lately, because there's also been a lot of things not to celebrate. I've heard of a lot of tragedies lately. So I'm grateful that I get to have so many celebrations with friends and family, because there are a lot of people that don't get to do that. So 
That is what I am grateful for today. So everybody put in the chat something that you are grateful for. Let's start retraining the brain to always look for the positive. Even if you don't think there is a positive, there really is always something to be grateful for. And then we're going to play a drinking game because this is a happy hour. I love that, Keila. Grateful for life. Absolutely. Because this is happy hour, we're all going to grab our bottle of water. We're also going to be training ourselves to drink more water. So every time I say the word gut, you drink, okay? And I actually have a shake, so it's not water, but it's got water in it. So training ourselves to get into rest and digest, training ourselves to look for the positive, and training ourselves to drink more water. You're already ahead of the game just doing those three things, right? We are going to talk about detoxification today. And like I said before, you know, we live in a much different world than we used to back in the day. There are toxins in our air. So every time we breathe in, we are breathing in toxins, which is another reason to breathe through the nose because your nose filters the air. Breathing in through your mouth doesn't filter the air. So we breathe in toxins. We have toxins in our water, tap water. There are toxins in our clothing, in our bedding, in our food supply, in our plastic bottles. This is not a plastic bottle, but everywhere you look, there's toxins. So we're constantly bombarded by toxins. So what we really need to do is set our body up so that when the toxins come in, our body can safely remove them out. If your toxic load bucket gets too full and there's too many in there and it fills up and it spills over, that's when you start to run into trouble. And that's when the toxins start circulating through your body and we need to hold on to those somewhere. So your body is always protecting you. So what your body does is it holds on to those toxins in your fat cells and it will not let those toxins go until you safely remove them out of the body. So if you are having, I posted about this earlier today, if you are having stubborn weight gain, especially belly fat, that weight that just won't go away and you say, I'm eating healthy, I'm exercising, but I can't lose that weight, it might be a problem of toxicity happening in those fat cells and your body is really trying to protect you, it's doing you a big favor. So safely removing those toxins is important because if you do some kind of drastic detox and you don't, there's two phases of detox, if you don't do it properly, the toxins can recirculate, you can get sicker. So what we want to talk about is just a very safe way to get the body working right so those toxins can safely be excreted out of the body. So how do you know if you might need to detox? And some of these things may surprise you. Some things we just, that's just a part of life where it's a part of getting older, but that does not have to be true. You can be in your 50s and 60s and 70s and not have any health problems. It is an actual thing that you can do. But we gotta address those four pillars that I talked about and that's how you can accomplish that. So how do you know you need to detox allergies? So allergies, seasonal type, allergies to food, any type of reaction that your body is having to something can be a sign that there's some toxins going on. Sugar cravings or other cravings could be a sign that there's toxicity happening in your body. There's a difference between listening to your body. Sometimes your body will tell you it needs something and cravings where you have to have that thing and that's all your brain can think about. Those are two different things. If you're having those cravings, that can be a sign of toxicity. Any kind of skin issue, so acne, eczema, psoriasis, rashes, things like that is usually a sign that there are toxins circulating through your body. Your detox organs are gonna try and remove those things out of your body. And your skin is your biggest detox organ, so the skin can try and pull these things out and that's why you can end up with skin issues. Fatigue, so if you're just tired, sluggish, can't get going in the morning or in the middle of the day, or like that, that feeling of I'm so tired but I can't go to sleep, a lot of people have that feeling. That is a sign of toxicity. That's your body working overtime to try and fight this toxicity, and it's just draining you of all of your energy, right? Brain fog. So part of why our gut health is so important and can affect things like our brain and our skin is due to leaky gut. And I, we've already done a leaky gut happy hour, so if you missed that, just comment leaky and I will give you that, I'll give you that link. But really super important you guys to address leaky gut because what happens is over the years, I think all of us in this group are at an age now where we've done some damage to our gut lining. And as the gut lining 
starts to get damaged, toxins can sneak through. Things that are supposed to be excreted out through our pee and our poop can sneak through into the body, get into our bloodstream, and then circulate all throughout the body, right? So brain fog and skin issues and joint pain, thyroid issues, these can all be to the toxins sneaking through our gut lining and settling in somewhere else in our body. If the toxins settle into your thyroid, you're gonna have thyroid issues. If your toxins settle into your joints are gonna create inflammation to try and protect you, but you're gonna be chronically inflamed if you don't get those toxins out. And then stubborn weight, we talked about that. Hormone imbalance, everything is connected in the whole body. So a lot of what is frustrating about the medical system is that when you have a hormone issue and you go to a doctor and they just give you hormones, or, or you go to a doctor for your migraine and they just give you something for your migraine, is that we're not realizing that everything is caused by something else in the body. So if we're just looking at something individually like a hormone imbalance, but we're not looking at possibly the toxicity in the body or the leaky gut or the gut bacterial imbalance, that hormone issue is never going to get resolved because we still haven't solved the cause of your hormone issue. And then insomnia, when you are asleep, all of your organs, like each of your organs has a time period that it needs to get to work. So this is according to traditional Chinese medicine. And you can look up the TCM organ clock and you can see what organs get going at what time. In the middle of the night for two hours, your liver wakes up. Your liver needs to do all of its processes. If we don't get deep sleep, the body cannot do all of its processes. So especially the liver is really important to get deep sleep during that time. And if you wake up during that time, which is about between one and three in the morning, that could be that your liver is waking you up because it's on the struggle bus. And it really is having a problem being able to do all of its good processes and that's what's waking you up and keeping you up at night. So those are all signs that you might need to do some detoxification in the body. So rather than doing a juice cleanse, which I don't love juice cleanses because you need protein to detoxify and fiber. So when you juice something, you're taking out all of the fiber and juice doesn't really have any protein in it. And so I don't love just doing a drastic cleanse like that, but what I do love is giving the body what it needs to naturally detoxify. So what are the things that we are naturally detoxifying from? We need to know what we are detoxifying from in order to stop doing those things while we support our body in the natural detox process. So let's just do a little self-assessment here and you can put it in the chat if you are brave and want to share or you can just hold up a finger or do some little markings but we're just gonna do a little self-assessment give yourself a point if you use conventional makeup or skincare like something that is not proven to be safe for humans have you looked it up on EWG if you guys go to EWG.org slash skin deep you can look up all of your skincare products and see if they are safe or if they're toxic. So if you don't quite know, probably give yourself a point. If you use conventional feminine products, tampons, pads, they're very toxic. If I could only tell you one thing today that you are going to listen to and go out and do, please don't buy conventional feminine products. They are super, super toxic. And when you're putting something inside your body and everything you put inside your body gets absorbed into your bloodstream, that's a really dangerous thing. So look for organic or look for other options in that arena. So conventional skincare and makeup, conventional feminine products, air fresheners in your home or your car, super toxic. So you can give yourself a point for that. Dryer sheets, toxic. So that's a point. Bottled water or plastic food storage containers. So I think we're at five. Um, conventional cleaning products your Cloroxes, your Lysols, your really fragrant cleaning products, pretty much anything you find in the grocery store. That's a point. Teflon, nonstick cookware, TFAL. If you have not heard of PFAS yet, Forever Chemicals, there is a movie about it, and I can't remember what it's called, but I will post it in the group. Very eye-opening. DuPont, who manufactures Teflon, this nonstick cookware, they know that these chemicals 
that make or these products non-stick. When they get into your body, they don't leave. They're called forever chemicals. So babies are born with forever chemicals in their body now. So we're already behind the eight ball when we're born, if we're born with forever chemicals in our body, right? So babies now are born with an average of something like 200 chemicals in their umbilical cord. They'll test the umbilical cord. Women put an average of 168 chemicals on their body every single day. So these forever chemicals are now not only in Teflon, but they are in things like our bedding and our carpet and some makeup and packaging. So when you buy packaged foods, these forever chemicals could be in there. So this is a really important thing, but the number one thing that you definitely don't want to do is use that TFAL or the, any Teflon nonstick, because every time you cook, those forever chemicals are getting into the food. So I think that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pesticides. So if you eat non-organic food, which is going to be all restaurant food, anything non-organic is going to have pesticides. And we can't eat organic 100% of the time. And even organic food now tests positive for pesticides just because of neighboring farms. So we can't get away from it, but we do want to try and mitigate it as much as we can. So pesticides, so non-organic food, that's eight. And then using a lot of antibacterial everything, like hand sanitizer and antibacterial hand wash and face wash and kitchen stuff. Well, there's way too much antibacterial stuff now. It's depleting our good bacteria, which allows for the bad bacteria to overgrow, which is toxic. So I think that was nine things. So if you gave yourself a point for, I would say more than three of those things, then we definitely need to make a concerted effort to do a detox. Those are all, that's not an extensive or exhaustive list by any means of everything that's toxic, but that is the most important places to start, I would say. Also looking at your tap water, you, if you go to ewg.org, so EWG is the environmental working group. If you go to EWG, there's up on the right hand corner, it says tap water database, and you can click on that and it'll tell you about the tap water in your county. I think it's your county or your zip code, something like that. So you can see exactly what is in your tap water and see if maybe you need to get some kind of water filtration system for your home. There's all kinds of them out there now. But I would just do a little research before just purchasing one and get one that's going to fit with your home and everything like that. But that's a really important one too. So we know the signs that you need to detox and we know what we're detoxing from. So if you can go down that list and just start like next time you run out of a cleaning product, maybe just replace it with a safer cleaning product. If you look at the Clorox wipes container, which I think everyone used 27,000 Clorox wipes over the whole pandemic, right? It actually says on it, not safe for humans or pets. And it also says on it, to on the front, it removes 99.9% .9 of bacteria. And then if you turn it around and look at the directions, you have to use as many wipes as it takes to keep the area clean or to keep the area wet for three minutes and that's how it removes 99.9% .9 of bacteria. So nobody does that, right? So we're using this toxic product that's not safe for humans or pets. We're using it everywhere in schools and in hospitals and in our kitchen and in our bathroom and it doesn't even remove the bacteria that we want it to remove. So there are much safer and much more effective ways to remove dirt and bacteria and things from your house that aren't going to damage you or your pets. So if you just look at the next thing you run out of, maybe the next thing you run out of is like your body moisturizer. Maybe I can replace that with a better option. Go to ewg.org slash skin deep. They rate products there. There's green, orange, yellow, red, something like that. You want to be in the green. If your product is not in the green, I would swap it with a different product. And if you guys want a list, so I have a list of products that I use and that my clients use that I've totally vetted. I always research the actual company itself, not just the products to make sure that the company is legit because unfortunately there are loopholes in everything. So one of the loopholes that I always look for is the word fragrance. If you see the word fragrance or perfume on the ingredient list, 
the loophole in this country is that it can be a proprietary blend of things that the company doesn't have to tell you about because it's proprietary. But it can be any number of chemicals. I think there's something like 2,000 chemicals that are under that umbrella of the word fragrance. So anything with the word fragrance is toxic for your body. Anything that touches your skin gets absorbed into your bloodstream. Anything that we breathe into our body goes into our lungs, gets absorbed into our body. So it's not just about the food, right? It's about everything that we come in contact with all throughout the day. So without overwhelming you with all the products in your whole entire house, just be a little more conscious and look at your next thing and go, I wonder if this is safe. Maybe look it up on EWG and maybe look up just a safer replacement for it. And if you want the list of clean options that I've researched for all my clients, just put safe swap list in the comments and I will send that over to you. So how do we set our body up for detox success? How do we make sure that our body is able to safely detox things all day long? Because we want to do this for, yes, do I want you to lose weight? Of course. Do I want you to clear up your skin and have glowing skin? Of course, yes. But the bigger picture here is that if we don't start detoxing now, how much more full is your toxic load bucket gonna be when you get into your 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s? Then it's really gonna turn into much, much bigger issues than just having a skin rash or having some belly fat. It's gonna turn into a lot more than that. So we're really looking at the bigger picture here and these are things that we want to not only do, I don't like saying I'm doing a detox. Detox is something we need to do every single day because of the world that we live in now. So number one, water. Most people are dehydrated. We need water to get into the cells of our body to be able to flush these things out of the body. So a good way to figure out how much water you need is to take half of your body weight in ounces of water, 100 max, that is how many ounces of water you can drink, you should drink a day, I don't like using the word should, but that's recommended, I'll say, and then a good thing to do is to buy a water bottle, figure out how many ounces it is, say it's a 20 ounce water bottle, and say you need 80 ounces of water per day if you weigh 160 pounds, to drink four bottles of water per day because they're each 20 ounces. And a really clever way to do it is to put four hair bands around your container, and then every time you drink one, take one off. So if you're empty by the end of the day, all four of your bands are off, you drank your four bottle. So number one, absolutely we must get enough water into the body. And then number two, fiber. So you don't wanna just go from, I think the average American gets about 15 grams of fiber and I think the recommended is maybe 25 plus. Um, so most people are getting about half or less the recommended amount of fiber. So you know this is gonna cause all kinds of gut issues to begin with, diarrhea, constipation, things like that. But we need fiber to bind to things to excrete them out of the body. So if you're not having formed bowel movements every single day, you're not excreting toxins properly out of your body. Not loose, not hard, not every other day, every day at least once a day, formed bowel movements. So that's really important. And fiber is one of those things that is going to help bind to things and excrete them out of the body. But you don't wanna go from 15 grams up to 40 grams. You're not gonna like that. Your body is not gonna like that. It's gonna react. So slowly increasing your fiber, you know, and you want to ideally get it from your food. But if you can't get it from your food, there are fiber supplements out there that are great. I do not recommend Metamucil. Turn it around, look at the ingredients. The ingredients are garbage. Yes, there's one ingredient in there that is actually fiber. The rest of them are chemicals and garbage. They're toxic. So yeah, you're putting some one thing in that might be good for you and then five things in that are toxic. So I don't recommend Metamucil. If you need a recommendation, let me know. You guys just reach out to me. If you have questions, you need recommendations, please just reach out to me. So increasing your fiber, things like apples and raspberries and beans and veggies. Veggies have fiber. Veggies and fruits have fiber. That's the best way to know if you're getting fibers if you're eating veggies and fruits. Try to eat the rainbow of fruits and veggies. 
so that you're getting all different kinds of fiber and different kinds of antioxidants. So that's the next one is antioxidants. I call an antioxidants little disease fighters. And how do you know you're having antioxidants? If you're eating a plant. So every different color of plant has different antioxidants, different polyphenols, all these different plant compounds that are gonna help your body detoxify. They're gonna help go in and scavenge up all these free radicals and things that are made by the processing process in your body. They're gonna scavenge them up and get them out. So antioxidants, colorful plants, but pretty much any plant is gonna be good for antioxidants. Fermented foods. So things like sauerkraut and kimchi. Yogurt is okay, but yogurt is normally dairy, which a lot of, most people are lactose intolerant. Probably about 85% of people are lactose intolerant. And it, they usually add a ton of sugar. So yogurt is, might have a little bit of probiotics in it, but really you wanna go for something more like kimchi, sauerkraut, real pickles. So when you go to buy pickles in the store, I love pickles, my, my mouth is watering. Turn it around, look at the label. You don't want it to say vinegar. If it says vinegar, it's not fermented. So if you find one that does not have vinegar, it's in the refrigerator section. Those are actually real pickles. Those are fermented pickles. So those are gonna be good for you. So adding fermented foods into your day is really great. Greens, more greens, more variety of greens. And I'm sorry to say, but like your handful of spinach in your smoothie is not even close to being enough greens. People always say, oh yeah, I get plenty of greens. I put spinach in my smoothie. I'm talking like seven or eight servings of greens per day to get the real good beneficial amount of greens. Now, nobody thinks that is easy. That's why I drink a shake. Actually, I drink two shakes every day. This is more greens than you could ever get into your body by eating it. Six superfood salads worth of greens in every shake. Because I know I'm not gonna eat eight servings of greens every single day, maybe once or twice here and there, but we're all busy people. So finding something, again, look at the ingredients. If you're gonna do a shake, look at the ingredients. It might be more toxic than good. This one that I use is 100% certified organic, glyphosate free, all real food, no additives. That is actually on my safe swap list if you wanna check that out. So on that note of glyphosate, if you have not read my article on glyphosate yet, please go to the event, this event in the group and read my article on glyphosate and you'll see why it's so important. Remember we were talking about trying to eat organic food as much as possible. If you read that article, you'll see why it's so important. Glyphosate directly kills our gut bacteria. It causes leaky gut and it is also linked to cancer. So glyphosate is one of the biggest dangers of health these days and this these shakes also detox glyphosate it's the only thing on the market that does that so daily detox right supporting that daily detox with things like that herbs all herbs any herb that you like use it make herbal tea put herbs in your cooking you can use essential oils made from herbs essential oils are so great but anything that's herbs is going to be so great for you they're like before medicine, herbs were medicine, and that's still what they use in traditional Chinese medicine. They still use herbs because they're so powerful. If you ever go to the doctor, I don't know if they ask you, like, are you on anything herbal? Do you take any herbal supplements? Because the herbs are so powerful, they can counteract medication. So herbs are medicinal. So, you know, cilantro and rosemary and basil and parsley, again, more greens, but they're like really super concentrated and really medicinal. So we want to increase sleep and increase the deep sleep. So a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I sleep eight hours, but they're still waking up not refreshed, can't lose weight, bloated. That would tell me that they're probably not getting deep sleep. So we wanna really focus on getting deep sleep, like that, that three or four hours in the middle of the night, especially when your liver wakes up and gets to work, you wanna make sure you're getting that deep sleep. So anything that you need to do, to get deep sleep, please do it. My top tips, no screen time for two hours at least before bed. So having this thing this close to your face, blue light is gonna tell your body it's daytime. So turn off your phone or put it aside, put your iPad away, put your laptop away at least two hours before bed. We need to train the brain what is daytime and what is nighttime. So first thing in the morning, you want bright light. 
So get your face into the sun, get your eyeballs into the sun. If you can't get sun, like I live in Seattle, we don't get a lot of sun in the morning. I have a happy light. Look up happy light, get that into your brain. So you tell your brain this is daytime. And then at nighttime, you gotta tell your brain it's nighttime. So everything dark, no blue light. You can get blue light filters on your phone. You can get screen protectors. You can get blue light blockers in your eyeglasses, like I have them in here. So just making sure that for the couple hours before you go to bed, you start preparing your brain that it's time to sleep. Having a nice nighttime routine is always good. Anything that you can do to relax, get into rest and digest, out of fight or flight, do a little journaling, do a little reading, shut down those screens, try not to eat for a few hours before bed. You don't want your body digesting when it needs to be doing the detox. It can't detox if it's digesting, right? A reducing stress. Just like we talked about in the beginning, if your body is in fight or flight, which it comes from caveman days, like when you're running from a tiger in the caveman days, your body goes, oh shit, we are running from a tiger. We need to shut down the most energy consuming process in the body, which is the digestion, send all the blood to the limbs, take all the blood away from the digestive tract, send it to the limbs, shoot up your cortisol, so we can run from this tiger. Nowadays, we're not running from tigers, but what our body perceives as stress, checking our email, we got an email from the boss, somebody cut us off in traffic, the kids need a ride everywhere. All of these things, we live in this different world now where we're just in constant fight or flight, the news is on 24 hours a day. If your body thinks that you are in fight or flight, that digestion is never gonna work. So we need to be able to reduce, not reduce, external stress we can't reduce that we have to work we have to check our email we have to drive the kids around we don't have to listen to the news but whenever you can try and get your body into rest and digest <sighs> take those three deep breaths go take a walk outside look at nature looking at nature will get your body into rest and digest do some gratitude whatever you can to reduce the effect of stress on your body is going to help your body be able to detox better. And then sweat. So exercise, moving your body will move the toxins through. So we have our lymphatic system is like our garbage carrier system of our body. So the lymphatic fluid lives right under your skin. It doesn't have anything pumping it, like our body has our heart to pump our blood, but our lymphatic system has nothing pumping it. We are the pump. So if we're stagnant all day, then our lymphatic system is gonna be stagnant. I'm at a standing desk now. See if you can get a standing desk, keep your body moving. Do some kind of exercise, yoga, Pilates, walking, weightlifting, whatever kind of exercise that you enjoy doing, biking, swimming, but also just sweating in general. So if you have a sauna at your gym, something like that, it's good to get that sweat out of our largest organ, which is our skin. Keeping your bowels moving is so very important. I know I said it before, but movement in your body helps movement in your bowels. If you are stagnant all day, your bowels will be stagnant most likely. So if you're having a problem with being regular, like I said, at least one formed bowel movement every single day, please don't let your doctor tell you it's normal to only go two or three times a week. A lot of doctors say that and that's it's harmful. So getting your body moving, especially like twisting movements. If you need to detox, if you need to get your bowels moving, twisting actually gets your organs moving, right? Physical movement is so good. But finding something that you enjoy doing is paramount here because again, if you're doing something that you don't wanna do or you, you are doing some kind of exercise that is like too hard on your body, too extreme, and that puts you into stress, and it puts you into fight or flight, now we've defeated the purpose, right? So I teach Pilates. If you ever wanna take my class, please just comment Pilates and I'll get you a free class so you can try it out. But something that you could actually enjoy that's not gonna put you in fight or flight and keep you there the rest of the day is gonna be whatever, whatever you enjoy is gonna be best for you. And then the other thing about the lymphatic system is dry brushing. So that lymph fluid lives right under our skin. 
right before you get in the shower. So you can just look up dry brush on Amazon or anywhere. Take that dry brush and brush from your feet up your legs, go in a circular motion around your belly, always toward the heart and get that lymphatic fluid flowing. So it's your garbage carrier system. So the more you can get that flowing, the better detox you're going to have. You're gonna get that lymph taking the toxins where they need to be excreted. And then on top of that, if you have a little trampoline, I have a little trampoline right there. I don't know if you can see it. So you can just get, again, on Amazon, a little trampoline. Sometimes I'll put it here and just do a little jumping on the trampoline. Your lymph fluid runs vertically through your body. So you wanna get that lymph fluid going up and down. And the rebounding, it doesn't work to just jump. It's the actual rebounding. So they do this at NASA. It's their like number one exercise at NASA for their, for their astronauts to keep their body healthy and keep their lymphatic fluid flowing. So if you can combine the dry brushing with the trampoline jumping, then you're really on top of it. So that is the how. If you can take all of those things, like I said, try not to overwhelm yourself, but tackle one thing at a time. And then I will answer. Go ahead and put any questions in. I am done with my notes. So go ahead and put any questions in the chat. Can you please spell the word you mentioned? Oh, glyphosate. Okay, so just a quick rundown on glyphosate. It is the main ingredient in Roundup. And it was introduced in our country at about 1974, I think it is. And if you look at a correlation between when they started Roundup and disease, it's a direct correlation. It kills your good gut bacteria. So they say it's safe for humans, even though it causes cancer. They even call it the farmer's cancer. But it kills your gut bacteria and it causes leaky gut. So even though it might be safe for humans, which it's really not, what they don't tell you is that it's not safe for your bacteria. Your bacteria is a bunch of little bugs, right? And it's a pesticide. So it's meant to kill bugs. It kills your gut bacteria. So it truly is one of the greatest dangers to our health these days. And that's why I do a glyphosate detox every single day. Because every time you're eating an non-organic food, you're eating it, eating the, the glyphosate. So if you guys want more information on the glyphosate cleanse that I do, I do run 30 day cleanses where we detox glyphosate, we detox parasites, so we detox all these other toxins out of the body, get you all of your greens, all of your nutrition, start to build back up your leaky gut. We actually have a supplement that starts to build back up your leaky gut, repair the villi. So we have these little fingers in our gut, these little villi. And th these are the ones that sweep the toxins through the body or absorb the nutrients, like these little villi are the gatekeepers. So when they get damaged, that's when you can start to run into all kinds of problems in the body. And I actually have seen pictures of the villi repaired after doing this 30 day cleanse. It's much more than a cleanse. It gives you all of your nutrients. It gives you way more than all of your nutrients. Each shake has six superfood salads worth of nutrients in it. it helps improve sleep, improves the gut brain connection, improves the bacterial balance, and improves detoxification. If you want assistance with this, I do free phone calls with everyone in this group. I'll post a link to the free phone call. It's good to work with a practitioner when you do things like detox so that you make sure you're doing it the proper way and not recirculating those toxins through the body. So I'll post the link to book a discovery call with me. It's a free call, but we can just dive deeper into your issues and see if we're a good fit to work together. It's not always a good fit, but I would love to work with each and every one of you on whatever your gut issues are, whatever your health issues are. Um, I am here to help. I'm here to answer questions. And if you want to work together, I would be thrilled to be able to work with you and get you feeling better very quickly because doing it on your own took me I had gut issues for about 35 years. It took me a good 10 years of trial and error and Googling and going back to school and all of that to get myself feeling the way I do right now. But it really only takes me a few weeks to a few months with my clients to get them feeling like I do now. So we can get it done much quicker and doing it together is always more fun than doing it on your own too. So everybody, thank you so much for coming. And I really acknowledge 
how many of you are watching these and putting things into place and I'm getting some wonderful texts and messages that these are helpful. I really just want you to give yourself a pat on the back for being here, giving a damn about your own health and doing something about it. Love you all and I will see you next week. So Thursdays at three o'clock is the new gut health happy hour weekly time and we're gonna do it every week, Thursday, three o'clock Pacific time, 6 p.m. Eastern. All right, have a great night, everybody, and I will see you here next week.